Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. This week, I'm gonna continue with my theme of doing maintenance on my R35 GTR. Although this week, technically the maintenance is my first upgrade. I'm gonna be doing brakes all the way around. That includes rotors, pads, and steel braided brake lines. Now, before you get started on doing this type of job, you gotta make sure there's one piece of equipment in your toolkit you might not necessarily have, and it is this. Now, I know what you're thinking, just an energy drink. You probably already have that anyways but this isn't just an energy drink, it's a bribe. Now, some of you might recognize this is Mike. He's been in some of my other videos. He owns that absolutely awesome Bayside Blue R32 GTR. If you haven't checked out his stuff, he's a PXDN Ninja. You can follow him on Instagram and YouTube as well. Now, if I was just doing the rotors and pads only, yeah, that is a one person job. But because I'm gonna be swapping out the brake lines, I'm gonna have to bleed the system, and that's definitely a two person job, unless you have some specialized equipment most people don't have. So I wanna send a shout out to Speed by Design for sending me this absolutely awesome kit and doing it very, very quickly, I've gotta admit. Uh, you might be wondering why I decided to go with Speed by Design as opposed to going with Nissan. Well, there's a couple reasons for this. Number one ping, the Nissan parts are just stupidly overpriced. To do the rear brakes on the R35, Nissan quoted me $4,300. That's just absolutely stupid. If you get this entire kit from Speed by Design, you're looking at about $1,200, $1,300. Much, much better. And they're actually better. Now, the brake pads from Nissan, typically you're gonna squeak a little bit because they're a high performance pad. The brake pads from Speed by Design, from what I understand, are not gonna squeak and they grip just as well as a stock Nissan. Now let's see exactly what Chris, who owns the company, includes in the kit. So we've got here the rear brake pads and really cool thing, looks like he included some of the extra hardware. So we got new retaining clips and new pins. So that's kind of cool. When it comes to the front road, front pads, man, these suckers are big and heavy. So here they are, and that looks like it. It looks like he didn't give us any spare hardware for the front brakes, which I'm a little disappointed in, but then again, I wasn't expecting the free hardware for the rear. So you can either see it as a bonus or not, that's up to you. Then of course, we got the steel braided brake lines, which is kind of cool, because it looks like he gave us some uh, clips and some zip ties and new banjo bolts. So that's very, very nice. Now you might also be wondering about the rotors. Why I also didn't go with Nissan rotors is if you look at the Nissan rotors, they are cross drilled. They're drilled straight through the rotor and they are notorious for getting stress fractures over time, both just due to wear and heat. And over time, those stress fractures can actually cause that rotor to fail. Whereas here, when you get a speed by design rotor, they're just slotted. Now the great thing about having a slotted rotor versus a drilled rotor is because they're slotted, those heated up gases that happen from hard braking can still escape, which will get you better grip. But because it's not cross drilled, I don't have to worry about those stress fractures. For those of you who didn't see my video on how to do an oil change, I'm gonna go ahead and leave a link to that in the description down below and a banner above my head. But for those of you who did, you're gonna remember that this car sits really low. In fact, it sits so low that you can't get a jack underneath it. So we're gonna do the whole redneck and backyard mechanic and thing. We're gonna use some lumber, to get a little extra space on it to get the jack underneath and get this sucker in the air. All right, now that the car's in the air, one thing I did forget to mention was there are specific jack points in this car where you jack up the car from underneath and it has specific points for putting jack stands. I'm gonna go ahead and put a picture of that up on the screen so you can see where it's safe to jack up your car. But seeing as how I've already got this up in the air, it's time to get these wheels off and get working. One thing I did forget to mention is this particular uh, socket is actually a non-marring socket, so you can use it on your lug nuts and not have to worry about destroying your wheel. All right. All right, now that the wheel's off, we can actually get to the brakes. Uh, the cool thing about the front is they're really easy to work on because you can turn the wheel and you can see. So the first thing we start off by doing is by getting rid of these pins right here. Now, typically you'd want to use a drift if you have one. I don't, but you should be able to just Now this one of course has a clip, so that's gonna make this a little bit more 
Another pain in the ass. Now, you're gonna notice that there's a clip on the bottom, but not on the top. And this is typically how it comes from the factory. And a lot of the times it creates a rattle. So most people have done this before, have bought an extra clip to use on the top. Mine wasn't rattling, so I assumed it was done. So in the future, I might pick up an extra set of clips for each side that. All right, next should be these pins. Let me see. Break dust. Now, if you have a brake spreader, it's a good tool to have, works, but if you don't, as you can see, C clamp works just as well. And there we go. This one's probably about halfway through his life. Now that we got the uh, pads out, it's time to uh, go ahead and get rid of the rotor. Now, before we do, I'm gonna take you over here and show you these two bolts right here. You're gonna need to remove those bolts because as you can see, it's a hard brake line that is connected to that bracket. So we do need to remove that bracket before we can move the rotor or the caliper. have to use a breaker bar on this sucker. So as a note, the bottom bolt is shorter than the top bolt. That'll do. You know what those are? What? Those spacers. See the wheels are sticking out. Someone put spacers on this. Might have to use the breaker bar again. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we might have to put the brakes back on. Or we put something through here and off the way. Yeah, that would work if you want to go grab one of the screwdrivers. Yeah. It slipped. I don't. Okay, so no one ever talked about that. I mean, the problem is, is that I'm pulling one way, you're resisting another way. I don't think we're getting the 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 rotors moving too much. I think once we just put this back on, put the pads back in loosely, just step on it, and I can be able to use the breaker bar to break this loose. Uh, we might, let's see if we can, what we can do. All right, so a little thing that happened that we were not anticipating that you will not have to do with your car is it looks like the previous owner of my car put this wheel spacer on to just kind of help the stock wheels look a little bit more flush. They were on there pretty solid. So we had to break, put the brake back on to put pressure so we could break them loose, but now we should be good. So yeah, there's the spacer. I'm not sure if I'm gonna put this back on or not. But now I can get back to taking the whole thing apart again. Oh, so easy. All right, now that we got the rotor off, another thing we gotta do is we gotta remove this hi-hat off of the rotor. So it looks like it's some eight mils. So you gotta set up here on the back and here on the front. And off she comes. Don't forget these uh, little springs. You're going to need these suckers. Actually, you want to make this quicker? Why don't you run the gun? I'll support it from behind. Oh, sure. 
This seems like this is one of those situations where two hands are better than one. Yep. You good? Yep. Come on, man. There we go. All right. Yep, that should be all of them. All right, so that's all of them. This is probably gonna have a whole bunch of bolts to fall down right here. And there's your hi-hat. Be careful, these suckers slide right out, so don't tilt it too much. Now, looking at this rotor, this was definitely due to be done. As you can see, this sucker's got a gnarly lip right here. If you rub your finger, it's pretty deep. So these are definitely due, plus you got the stress fractures. So now we just gotta put on the, uh, the new rotor by Speed by Design, and we're ready to put this stuff all back together. All right, now we've got the hi-hat out. It's time to break open the new rotor. Now, a couple things about breaking in a new rotor. You can feel that California's got some wind issues. And on top of that, you can see there's some oil that they put on this to help protect it. Now, there is a left and a right side on these. You have to pay attention. So right there in the middle, these are the veins. So when you do the rotation of the car, you want the veins pointed backwards. So see how this one, the hi-hat will sit here. If it's on the passenger side, it's gonna rotate this way. And that would mean that the veins are pointed backwards, which means this is the correct side. So now we're just gonna uh, clean this up, attach the hi-hat and ready to put everything back together. All right. So now it's time to get this sucker on. Aha, there we go. that take one of these and put a little drop right here on the threads so I'll go ahead and give you the Loctite sure. so we got that we got we got one of these go ahead and hit me with a drop of Loctite on that there we go So now that we've got them all kind of seated, now we're gonna start torquing them down. Now, these are supposed to be set at, a, at uh, eight foot pounds, which would also be 96 inch pounds. A lot of foot pound torque wrenches don't go down that low. So I did bring my inch pound uh, torque wrench. So we're gonna set it for first 90. We're gonna go around and torque them down in a star pattern. And then we're gonna go around a second time at 96 and they'll be properly torqued. This is where having a buddy is gonna be really good because what's gonna happen is I'm gonna support the bolt from the underside, whereas Mike goes around and torques in a star, star pattern. Yeah, I think so. Okay. okay. Yep, rotate it up by six. Two, three, four, five, six. All right, so now we're just going to start at the top one and we'll start star patterning it again. All right, now that we're all torqued down to uh, 96 foot pound, or inch pounds, and uh, that'd be eight foot pounds, time to put this sucker back on. So remember that the shorter one of these goes on the bottom. Now I'm not seating those hard with the uh, ratchet because I'm probably gonna torque them down. All right, so caliper's back on. Go ahead, go ahead and torque those in. You do have a foot pound one, right? I do, you go back. All right, so it's 74 on the Allens and 18 on the 12 mil. All right, pop it up to 70, what did I say, 76? Four. 74. All right, so those are torqued down. I'm just gonna go ahead and do the uh, 12 mil by hand. All right, so now that's in there. All we gotta do is put in the brake pads. All right, so personally, I like to put the brake pad with the wear indicator, which is this little clip right here. 
on the inside. It's just my personal preference. Yeah, that slid just right on in nicely. Ah, there we go. Of course it goes too far. Okay, so there we go. Brake pads are in. So we're gonna start first with these pins. Now, with these pins, just as a note, uh, you definitely do not want to over tighten these. I have seen people who have broken the bolts in this, so definitely not something you want to do. And of course, this one, we got to do the spring. All right, I think that is it. We have now finished this side of the brakes. All right, here we go. All right, front's now done. Time to tackle the rear. Oh, I need to stop. Is the e-brake on? Oh, it just happened. It's American size. All right, guys. Uh, well, it looks like this is gonna end up being a part one of two. As you saw with the front wheel, the previous owner, who was an idiot, to put some spacers on there, and he just overly torqued them down ridiculously, and the lug nuts he used themselves are just super shallow, which means they round out real easily, and I did round one of them out. So without being able to take the spacer off, I can't get the rotor off, and I'm just kind of stuck. So I'm gonna make an appointment this week with a tire shop. We're gonna go ahead and have those removed. I'll also have them do the other side too, so next week we're just ready to go. We'll finish up with the rear brakes and we'll do the steel braided brake lines and all that fun stuff. And until then, if you want to see more GTR content, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. You can now follow me on all forms of social media, which include Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And I'll leave links to those in the description down below. Don't forget to follow my buddy Mike. Once again, his Instagram is PXDN Ninja, no spaces. And that's also the name of his YouTube channel. But until then, thank you all for watching. And until next time, forget everything else, focus on the finish line.